welcome back to another video on my channel as Algeria fail to get the perfect record in their AFCON qualifying group. It could have been six out of six, maximum points. Could have made a real statement to the whole continent saying we're the only boys to do this. First time it had been done in six years, if we were to do it. It hasn't been done maximum points since Senegal back in 2016 for the 2017 AFCON. Algeria nil, Tanzania nil. I said the score lines in the preview were getting smaller and smaller. I didn't know it was going to go from the days of 7-0 absolutely spanking them with Gulam and Ty their long shots to 0-0. Like we didn't even score a single goal at home in Anaba in a full house. Not a single goal at home to Tanzania. It's like we weren't even there. Um, I don't know what to say really. What a shambles. Now we said that Bill Muddy would use this fixture to test players and save the main team against Senegal. And that's exactly what happened. Almost got the starting lineup spot on. Only real shocks were Shaibi starting on the left because usually he plays as that number eight. He played as a left winger in this game. Uh, we said Mahi Orsa and Buatnani would start. The whole midfield, I told you, would start Abdeli Kadri and Zorgan. He really should be Zorgan after that one. Um, and the defence, he obviously decided to give eight Nori more minutes. He really doesn't trust Lucif in a game like this um, with Mandy, two guy and Vend Van den Kerkhoff. And then Mandrea Ngor, who actually probably had his best game for Algeria. Maybe Mandrea is the number one. If Mandrea starts the next game, that means he's just going to keep playing his number one in all the games. If he starts at Zugba in the next game, that probably means Zugba is the number one. So, starting line up, Mandrea with eight Nori, Mandy, two guy, and Van den Kerkhoff, Kadri Zorgan, and Abdelli with Mahios up top, but Nani on the right, and Shaibi for the first time ever in an Algerian shirt, starting on the left wing. Well... What the bloody hell was that? What actually was it? There are two players who have had absolute stinkers. I feel like you could play some of the clips from the old reviews in the past couple of years, and I'm just repeating the same things. How is Zor what has Zorgan done to get caps, right? The fact that he's in the squad is a shambles. Now, I know you've got, see, Ben Tyler blow on minutes, um, Adley blow on minutes, Awaz injured, Benassa is injured for a long time. But the fact that Zorgan starts for the Algerian national team. I could name you 15, 20 minutes right now, bang, that could be a better job starting over him. He is awful. Adam Zorgan has got to be one of the worst players to ever play for the Algerian team in midfield, ever. And I've seen some real bad players. I've seen some absolute stinkers. How has he got that many caps? He's living off his dad's legacy. He is shocking. If Bel Muddy continues to not sub him on, start Zorgan, he's going to find himself starting to lose a fan base because you can't do that. He is, he's actually so bad. It's actually laughable. You actually start to feel a little bit sorry for him, like Carragher said. He's out of his depth. He, and this is Tanzania at home, by the way. Play Senegal in Dakar. If we play like that with him in Dakar, we'll get absolutely twatted in Dakar. He is shocking. He's actually shocking. It's actually sad that there are players, football players, that are professional football players, that have to watch this team on TV and go... I'm a young and upcoming central midfielder. I can't play for Algeria, but Zorgan is. But Zorgan is the type of player that makes you feel that you can play for Algeria one day. Because if he can, then anyone flipping can. He's awful. And the second player that was again, this is no surprise, absolutely awful, Mahios. Now, Mahios had one big chance in this game, only one. You'd think with Shaibi on the left and Bortnani on the right, who, by the way, Bortnani is fantastic, my man of the match. You'd think he get a lot of opportunities created, right? Mahios had one chance in the first half. Buanani beat about five men, sent them all back to Dar es Salaam, right? Pings in the, the ball into the box. Mahios is about eight yards out, he's in the box. Gets the ball. He's cleared it back to Buanani, where it came from. He's like played a one-two in the attacking phase. What are you bloody doing, Eamon? What are you actually doing? He's cleared it. And from that point, it was like watching, what's that striker's name? Aribi. Did we carry Aribi a few, a few months ago? It's a carbon copy. Now, I don't care if he's going to score against Swiss chocolate farmers week in, week out. It's not really any of my business. Oh, I want to know, are you going to do it when you put this shirt on? All right? And again, this is against Tanzania. And you had a game last time out, didn't you, against who is it? Was it against Niger or Uganda or something? Didn't score in that either. Mahios has got to go. As soon as we get the likes of Amin Gouri, this guy ain't starting again. Guri, Amora, Bonaja, maybe Delore if need be. Mahios is, oh, he is shocking. So that's the rant about 
as well going to Mahios. And ultimately, when you're starting with these two lads against a side with an Algerian manager that's got a point to prove in Algeria and Adelan Rouge, who has come to draw the game because he knows Uganda are going to slap Niger. So he knows he has to come here and he has to get a draw. And it's very hard to score here. So he knows Tanzania have to get a nil-nil, which he got. He's thinking, oh my God, Samata's out. But it's okay, let's up against Mahios. And by the way, two of the Tanzania back four play in the English non-league and Mahios couldn't score against it. He's thinking, lads, you've got nothing to worry about. It's only bloody Amen. Do you know what I mean? It's not Amin Guri, it's Mahios. So relax. So those two players, I mean, have got to go. Mandrea made a very, very good save. Like I said, he got a clean sheet, to be fair. And that is probably his best performance in an Algeria shirt. I'm happy with him. I'm also happy with Ain't Nori. Maybe he needs to pull his socks up, literally, but some brilliant skill moves. Surprised he didn't get more attacking like he did previously. Maybe he was told to stay back a little bit more. Van den Kerkhoff went close with a header. He actually stole a header from Mahios. Actually got into the box and got a header close on goal. Way closer to the target than Mahios did. If we had Van den Kerkhoff or, or Gitud or whatever he's called this week up front, right, he'd have done a lot better. I'm happy with him. Remember, he's second choice to Yusuf Artal. When Artal is fit... To have a guy like Van den Kerkhoff that can come in the last 20 if Artal isn't fit to play it, um, it's a really good option. So remember, even if he's not the best, he's not the first choice. Mandy was a captain. Mandy, you got to remember, maybe not the best defensively, but his range of passing, and he did show it in this game, his range of passing out the back is very good. And probably something, not a great strength in our defence. So Mandy's passing was good, and two guys cleared everything that came his way. Got no problems there. Zorgan useless. Abdeli, right? which seemed to be the furthest of the three centre mids. He was quite further forward, wasn't he? He was in that sort of Shaibi before Faguli role, number eight slash number 10. He could have had a hat-trick in the second half. I'm being dead serious. Abdeli could have had a hat-trick. If Shaibi was in that position in the middle, in that number eight position in this game, he would have banged at least one of those in, right? He literally could have had a hat-trick. He fluffed a lot. Um, now, he worked hard, but... Abdelli won't win you the AFCON if he's starting. I haven't got a problem with him. It's not like he's Rogan. He gets in the right place. It's, it's, it's the wrong guy in the right place, what I'm trying to say. But he's not a disaster. Kadri could be a real gem. This guy's impressive. He covered every blade of grass. He was everywhere. And he's not the tallest fella. He's, not, he's quite a short geezer. But I thought Kadri was really impressive. And I'm surprised he's not got a big move. I think Kadri's got to leave Belgium much before Zorgan does. If Zorgan gets from Belgium to Holland or France right, before Kadri, then the scouts are, are like high as a kite because Kadri's very, very good. And I'd seriously consider Kadri on the plane to Abidjan next January. I think he's a very good footballer. So is Badruddin Boatnani. This guy is fantastic. The, the first 15 minutes, Tanzania couldn't believe it. They're thinking, oh my God, Mares isn't playing. They're probably wishing he was. Boatnani, the hunger, the desire, most certainly the man of the match, he was fantastic. Really, really good Buatnani. I'm so pleased he got that start. The ref didn't help him. Well, the ref didn't help our team full stop, to be honest, because every time we basically got past the, the Tanzanian middle phase, um, he decided to blow his whistle for no reason. And Belmadi started to get really wound up. It got to the players, I think, a little bit, that referee. Um, I've spoken about Mahios. On the left, Shaibi, good player. I don't know if that left wing is his best position. I think I do like Shaibi in the centre more. We saw him have a shot when he moved to the centre later on because Benrahma, Amora and Mares, probably the front three for Senegal, probably Algeria's front three if you to sort of gauge why he kept those three. You see Benrahma go to the left, Shaibi come to the middle and he looked a lot better in the middle for me. Amora, a lot of crosses went in and he's not the tallest guy. He had to sort of fight and that muscle and that's kind of what led to the little argy-bargy handbags at the end. Um, and Mares didn't do much. He actually picked up a bit of a knock in that game. Be interested to see what happens with that one, but hopefully he'll be okay because he didn't come off. And then we saw Badawi and Zaruki, two players you expect to start the game against Senegal. Just much better options than Abdeli and Zorgad. And maybe we'll see Badawi, Zaruki and Faguli in that Senegal game, which is going to do much better. Well, it's hard to do much worse than uh, than this team did. So, Algeria nil, Tanzania nil. We finish on 16 points out of 18. It's shocking. We haven't scored, we've barely scored any goals in this campaign. I don't think we've had to get out of first gear, to be honest, and we've got 16 points. Tanzania second in eight points. They get their job done. Uganda went to Nigeria and Marrakesh. They got their job done, but we didn't do our bit for, the, uh, for them. So Uganda win 2-0 in Niger 
it's not enough. They miss out by a point. They were begging for Algeria just to score one goal. If we scored one goal, it would have swung. Uganda would have got second. Tanzania would have been out. But what a moment for Tanzania. The two Algerian managers in this group prevail. We will be seeing the Algerian manager, Adel Amrouche, in the Africa Cup of Nations group stage. And we could draw Tanzania again in the group phase. Got to improve if we do face them again. Elsewhere... Um, Libya and Equatorial Guinea played out a draw. Didn't really matter. A lot of pl a lot of the, the the players in there were rested. So ultimately, Equatorial Guinea won their group um, with Tunisia, who beat Botswana tonight comfortably three 0 And Sakni still about, still scoring goals. That was goalless at half time. They turned it around. They beat Botswana by three goals to nil. So they come second. They advance out of that with Equatorial Guinea. Um, so no real surprises there. And Ghana. Get the job done. But just about. I said Mafuta was a threat for the Central Africa Republic. They led in Ghana for some time. Ghana, very lucky. The new player at West Ham, Kuda, scores a free kick. The goalkeeper completely fumbled it. And then Ghana win it late on um, with, with the lad from Leon. So Ghana do get that job done. And they were very, very fortunate to win that game in the end. I have to say they left it late to get the winner. Angola also on the plane to Ivory Coast. They drew nil-nil at home to a weakened Madagascar, that's a poor result again. That's really a result, Angola. I'm really disappointed and shocked. I thought Angola would win that comfortably and make a statement. I mean, ultimately, they did qualify for the tournament. Let's not get it twisted. There'll be more of the buzzing than playing well and not qualifying. But I expected more. Nonetheless, Angola and Ghana are the two teams that we predicted to advance. And that was the case. So let me know your thoughts down below on Algeria's performance against Tanzania. But not only fantastic, Kadri brilliant, but Zorgan has to be Zorgan and Mahios was Mahioslos. I'll see you next time.